Hello and welcome to Brooks TV, I'm Sarah Longson, coming up in today's show. Finally, Brooks Radio is on air, we met with the team that made that possible. And is journalism in the United Kingdom changing? Samira Ahmed gives us her views. And our reporter Noom makes his vote for the student union election. But first, Brooks TV visited the annual science festival that was held in Bond Square in the heart of Oxford Town Centre. Here's a look at what went on. The Oxford Science Festival is an enormous collaborative effort to help people from all ages explore science. The event took place in the heart of Oxford and the various stores were manned by different organisations offering hands-on activities. We're trying to think about an event that would launch the science festival. We, we decided what we really wanted to do was reach the people that don't necessarily have an interest in science, but who, for, you know, for all of us, science is really important. It's a part of everyday life. So we thought that we would put together a science fair that was really hands-on, that everyone could have a go at, that would demonstrate some of the ways that science is a part of our world, everyday life. Yeah, we're, I'm here at Oxford Brooks and I'm doing um, wounds and diseases. I'm doing bubonic plague, smallpox, anthrax and really horrible, gruesome things. Users got the chance to experiment with magnetic fields, play with liquid nitrogen and find out more information about air ambulances. We interviewed Mohamed Lakrimi, the principal engineer at Siemens. We have one demonstration where we are taking a piece of superconducting uh, material, it's called IPCO, and we are levitating it on a track of permanent magnet. We are taking flowers and show that if you cool them down to liquid nitrogen, they become very brittle. The festival offers events for young children right through to adults. There are events for professional scientists and people with an interest in science. However, most events are aimed at regular people who just want to have fun. They should do more advertising and they should bring it to the forefront much more. They don't do it enough and I think that's why a lot of children don't want to, not interested. I think people think, you know, all scientists are geeks, I think, and we need to, we need to part ourselves with that. It's fantastic, it's really nice seeing so many different, different kinds of science in one place and often things that you hadn't thought of side by side, so an air ambulance next to the design of a molecule, next to how Google software works. This event is not just a science event, but it is a family event. Everyone welcome to join. I'm Nat Primacy, Brooks TV News Report. Oxford Brooks Radio is finally on air. Helen reports. On the 30th of January 2012, after various attempts over the years, finally the student radio station of Oxford Brooks went on air. Our reporter Matt Talent visited the headquarters of Brooks Radio to chat to the people who made it happen. I'm Abby Beasley, I'm a president of the Radio Society at Brooks and um, it's, I started the Radio Society at the start of um, the first semester of this year. Um, and I run everything, sort of um, uh, the admin side of everything and um, coordinate Brooks Radio as like a whole. We also spoke to the studio manager and broadcaster at Brooks Radio who explained to us what his role is. I spend my time teaching um, uh, new recruits um, how to use the studio. So I'm, you know, I'm teaching history students how to use all the equipment here. Um, the main reason I got involved in British Radio was because I was kind of doing a favour for Abby. <laughs> um, she, you know, she just asked me and then I got really, really into it um, and now it takes up all of my spare time um, and pretty much takes up my degree as well. <laughs> David Brooks spoke to us about the technical side of setting up the station and how the broadcast works. We're not broadcasting over FM because it's far too expensive <laughs> um, and to broadcast over Oxford the show would require a ridiculous amount of money and infrastructure. So the way we've done it is we're broadcasting over the internet. So my job is getting the music and DJs from the sound desk to the website. Brooks Radio has only been broadcasting for two months but has already gained some fans from the broadcast industry. 
BBC Six Music presenter Stuart McConey recorded a message to show his support. Hello, this is Stuart McConey saying hello to uh, everyone at Brooks Radio. We love you, keep up the good work and um, we'll come and visit you one day. We would also like to congratulate Brooks Radio and wish them happy broadcasting. Oxford Brooks welcomes Samira Ahmed, the established journalist and broadcaster, to discuss if British journalism has an attitude problem. A few days ago, Oxford Brooks University organised a series of open lectures related to different subjects. At Gippsland Campus, Wednesday 14th of March, there was a lecture on the topic From Hagath to Hackgate, Does British Journalism Have an Attitude Problem? given by Samira Ahmed. Welcome to visit them all. Um, well, we organised this because we thought it would be very interesting for um, guests and students of, of Brooks. Um, and it was also, um, you know, part of the remit of the Open Lectures is to encourage a community and to have topical uh, issues and topical debate. And I think Samira Ahmed fits the bill for all of that, really. I'm not sure, really, but it's obviously about journalism. And obviously at the moment, with all this, uh, the Leveson Inquiry, etc., um, there's a lot of interest in journalism and um, exactly what the values of journalism is. And I think this is going to be a bit about the history of it. An hour of enjoyment and interest. Yes, I think it kind of helps you to change some of your perceptions, how you think um, you, you don't have to believe what you have been told. You have to think, everyone has to think and critically, I guess, analyze. Is that the truth? So everyone has to decide their, their own opinion. After the lecture, we had the chance to ask Samir about the essence of journalism. I think the essence of being a good journalist is really having an inquiring mind and wanting to find things out and not being afraid of authority. So when you get told no, you want to know why and you want to challenge it. Um, and if that's the essence, you can't do it without an ability to write it down or to tell the story in whatever media you're using. I think the key of being a good journalist is actually thinking about your audience first. So it depends what programme you work for or what news paper that you write for or if it's a website, what kind of audience you have. But I always think whoever I'm interviewing, and particularly if it's a politician, um, you know, what does the public want to know and what does the public have a right to know? So sometimes that's being challenging. Um, and the key thing is to explain it in, in language that everyone understands. Some journalists get very close to politicians because they spend a lot of time in that world. I don't. I'm, I'm not their friend. Um, my job is to report what they do and to challenge it when necessary. And in that sense, it's a kind of mission. And I feel quite proud to work in that mission. Being part of that mission for a while, Daniel Lores, Brooks TV. Next up, our reporter Noom takes us through the voting process for the new student union election. Students' union. Every year, there are students who put themselves forward for the job of student officer. They are responsible for leading the union for a fixed term of one year. The 6th to the 8th of March 2012 are the election days that students can choose their favorite student to be their representative. Where can they vote? Votes are case in every Oxford Brooks campuses. Everyone can yeah, vote like at vote where they are. Sarah Quinn, there's a couple. Tight run thing. I don't know that much about them, but I've heard about them. I've heard of it, but I haven't, I haven't really put much interest into it. Yeah, but not that much. Uh, there are people coming around talking about who to vote on. I don't know, I'll see. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I have noticed that there are a number of students who don't really know about this election. There are quite a number of students each year. How could the university communicate to get attention from all students? It's important for students to have the right leader elected. This election takes place every year to find a leader who wants to make a change. I think that's really everyone has to decide why it's important for them to vote uh, on their own individual terms. I think it's important generally because if you don't take part, your voice doesn't count. And everyone's got an opinion, they just need to make it heard. Um, a lot of people think, well, that that's SU doesn't make any difference, and it does. 
it does make a difference because at the end of the day, these are the people who go into these meetings with the university and who can bring changes who can, and who can lobby for different things that are going on around uni. So, yeah. I feel a lot of students don't really have the information they need to and it's a vital part of the academic experience and I want to bring the awareness to the students and make sure that they're, they can get the best for their money at Brooks. I have my own ideas about what I do, like trying to get lecture recordings online. But the main thing is getting other people's opinions out there. Uh, as president, I'm not the important one. It's all you guys. The candidate have got their own policies and experience for making change. But what do students want their winner to do after being elected? Maybe they could help the new students, especially the inter international students, to introduce them to university more and even may maybe the city. So it's, it's going to be, I think, a good idea. And maybe improvements to the library, uh, maybe more computers. Just more buses at more times. And the safety bus, for example, is quite good for students who abuse a bit of alcohol often. So that's, that's good for safety. Make some cheaper food at the uni. The, the food hall is too expensive. Yeah, and I think that there needs to be a bar. I think it would be much better to put on some events and stuff. As I am one of the Oxford Brooks students, it's important to me to give my vote. Today, I came to vote for students who I believe will do their best to represent me while I am at university. Here are positions we can choose to elect. Student Union President, Vice President Student Experience, Vice President Academic Experience, and other officers. The purpose of the election is that students vote for their favorite candidate to work for them to make university as they would like it to be. Transportation or bus service is one of the top issues that students are looking forward to see improve to make their traveling easier to each campus. No Mamnad Pimasi, Brook TV News report. That's it for this half, but coming up after the break. An interview with the SNU's new president and also the vice president of student experience. And Northampton Trojans visit our city, our city to play against the Oxford Hoops. Following the recent student union elections, the new president and vice president have been announced. Earlier in the week, Ashley and Paul paid a visit to Brooks TV studio to discuss how their plans could improve university life. Hi Paul and Ashley, thank you for joining us today. In terms of like societies, what about the subject of Morals Bar? There's been a lot of speculation about what's happening. Um, I've been to a few events there and it's been buzzing. It's a, like a wonderful yeah. environment. <coughs> what is the issue there? I think the problem with Morals Bar is that with other bars and clubs opening up in town, the, um, the choice available for the students was so much wider. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go back 20 years, Morals Bar was one of the only places. So it sort of got the business by default. Yeah. So as far as I'm aware, Morals Bar is going to go. What I would like to do is use our venue to not compete in the same way as what the clubs in town do, but use it as a venue to house our talent. So our DJs, our bands, our dancers, actors, performers. And then, so we're offering something different to the other, mm -hmm. the other venues mm -hmm. and making it very student run. So using our sound engineers, our um, promoters, everything. And is that going to be like a collaborative? Ashley, do you have like involvement? Well, yeah. That's again, one of our main things. We obviously want to get like, we obviously want to use our SU and try and get things up there, like events or activities. And that again is one of my a main point of my manifesto because we have a wonderful venue like the Mez Bar is beautiful yeah. like but it's just it isn't as used as it could be mm. and as we said like we don't want to compete against uh, the commercial like clubs and things in town yeah. because it's just it will be too difficult as we've seen over the past like couple of years so if we offer something different whether it's uh, like debates like tournaments whatever yeah. dance tournaments like have our own DJs our own bands up there 
to something which is completely different, therefore we're not competing with anyone. It's, it's our own thing. Still got that lively it's student mm -hmm. collaborative. And that way we can get people up there and get it to be used. Because yeah. like you go to other universities, their SU is always buzzing, there's mm. always something going on. And ours just isn't cutting like cutting it, so that's again that will be sorted out basically. Because yeah. do you think maybe it, the fact that Morals Bar is you know it's in the Clive Booth accommodation site, maybe people from say Slade Park or other is just mm -hmm. that bit further to go, and it's just a bit out of the way, and not many people know about it. That really. has been a problem before, and I also think promotion of the of the events. So at the moment they are doing something called Mobile Union, mm -hmm. which is um, taking the SU out of the SU and onto campus. Yeah. So we can push that a bit further. So rather than just have Mobile Union, we can also promote these sort of student events, these society events that are get taking place as mm -hmm. well. So if someone is studying at a different campus and maybe never goes to um, Headington Hill, yeah then they can be informed of these events that are taking place as well. Mm. Also, um, we said that the radio and the TV, that's a good media to get through to all the students. So if we use that, then we can start connecting with more students Definitely. and building a better community. Yeah, I think that's the whole, because you know, people go into town, but they go with you know, separate groups into town. Mm -hmm. And it just, if we did have that one place, you know, the SU, as you said, it's a great venue, yeah. that one place for, all the students to go, there'll be a much more definitely, you know, like unity. Yeah, mm. unity. That's the thing because obviously, if we did offer the same things as the things in town, like clubs, like club nights, it's the competition is much higher because most students now, before they go to club, they like to go to a bar, to mm -hmm. bar, to bar, and then go clubbing. Now, if you think of where our SU is, the closest bar we have, say, is Models, but apart from that, is maybe Clems. And no one's going to say when to go to Clems, like around there, and then trek up the hill yeah. to the SU. It doesn't fit in with like the uh, modern like clubbing like scene. It's easier to go into town. Exactly, yeah, it'll be easier to go that. say like through Cowley, then like, into town, uh, in town, and then go to a club. So that's the thing with SU. A lot of people don't understand. It's the position where it is isn't uh, like valid. It doesn't it won't work as well as if it was in town. So that's why if we offer something different, so it's not like a club night, but like some yeah. DJs up there, promote them through uh, Brooks TV, Brooks Radio, mm -hmm. maybe have a few street teams, just again, telling students what is going on and increasing, increasing communication. That's one of the main issues yeah. that no one knows what is going on at university. Mm -hmm. If we can increase the communication about things that are going on, and then hopefully we can get people up there. Well, it sounds like you've got some very exciting plans um, coming up and we will look forward to seeing those mm. changes happen sometime in the near future, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. So thank you very much for coming to talk to us. Thank no you worries. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. At Oxford Brooks, a special campaign is being run called Unseen Changes. Let's take a look at Ting Chu's report. Setting a historic student city, Oxford Brookes is one of the UK's leading modern universities and enjoys an international reputation for teaching excellence and innovation. Currently, Oxford Brookes has a student-focused campaign running called Unseen Change. Today, we are honoured having Pro Vice-Chancellor for Students' Experience at Oxford Brookes, John Raftery, to talk more about Unseen Change's campaign. Unseen Changes is uh, a new kind of campaign for us. We began the year with a huge building site on the Gypsy Lane campus. We're building, it's going to be a wonderful new library and student centre. And we thought, actually, everybody can see that. But actually, there are 2,500 staff in this institution. There are about 18,000 students, more than 20,000 people, doing lots of complicated things. And actually, there are hundreds of other changes going on all the time as we get better at what we do. And we thought we should really talk to the students and our community about some of the less obvious changes, because everyone knows about the obvious change. We wanted to talk about the smaller changes, but changes which really affect people's lives. For Oxford Brookes University, it is always very important to improve the student experience. Well, a modern campaign, it's not just the Pro Vice Chancellor telling the students, actually it has to be two-way. Oxford Brookes University is focusing on 100 unseen changes and hopes that they will make a real difference in the future. For example, there are over 1,000 rooms in halls right now available for the second and third year returning students. Additionally, Oxford Brookes has extended the opening hours for the Gypsy Lane Library. 
This year, the library will stay open for more than 480 hours compared with last year. But more importantly, the organizers of Unseen Changes campaign are asking, what other changes would you like to see? Output of information, I think, like the Erasmus schemes、um, and our international exchanges. Because if I had my time again, then I would have would have gone on a placement and gone abroad. Technically, the organization and Brooks, even the structure of the courses, is not well organized, and more classes is needed. Sometimes they switch off the classes just because there's no rooms available. I don't know. I'm I'm fairly happy with the experience, to be honest. From unseen change, we could notice that Oxford Brooks has done a lot of improvements, but hopefully the change will not stop here. Ting Chu, Brooks TV. Last Sunday, the 18th of March, Oxford Hoops and Northampton Trojans played a basketball match to compete for the third and fourth positions of the National League. Brooks TV witnessed the electrifying match and had the chance to talk with the players of Oxford Hoops after their victory. Sports reporters went down to the Great Catholic School Sports Hall in East Oxford. This is where the National League game took place between Oxford Hoops and Northampton Trojans. The head coach Frankie Marulanda has been working alongside rising ballers since last summer, and now this relationship has opened opportunities for many of the players. The athletes from both teams took time to get to know each other and have a quick warm-up session. The first quarter started with hoops dominating in the attack, as well as in the defence, and the crowd cheered them all the way. In the second quarter, hoops were on the defence. The player from the Northampton Trojans settles for a jumper. Hoops launches up with a monster block as the crowd cheers. The third quarter was Oxford's hoop best, as they adjusted their defence. As players executed to perfection, the lead grew more and more until the end of the quarter. The end was a little bit experimental, with changes and variations. The guests were 12 points behind Hoops in the beginning of the match. After an electrifying game, the final score was 86-77 to Oxford Hoops. Well, today, today in particular, we're looking at Jermaine Javis, the captain,、uh, who really came head and shoulders above everybody else. Giacomo Uva. Uh, he did very well too, and Desta Rudersmith, who is、uh, the main man in there.、Uh, when he came in, it was just explosion and points. So he was just terrific.、Uh, well, we're happy because we got the W, and the win is a win.、Um, however, I didn't think we were strong enough defensively. We made a lot of mistakes. We committed too many fouls.、Uh, we could have won this game by 20 or 25 points, and unfortunately, we didn't. But regardless, we got the W. We got to third place in the National League, so we're happy. But, you know, I mean, like you know, I was very lucky that I started off very strongly, you know, and I kept my head throughout the game, and I tried to make the, you know, the accurate passes when necessary, and obviously the key baskets. But it was a team effort today, like it is every game, and you know, there's no iron team, and at the end of the day, the W, that, as you know, is what counts.、Uh, Coach Frankie, he gave us、uh, four main guys、uh, so that we can lock into them, what their tendencies are, and yeah, we exposed them today. After this game, Oxford Hoops drives to third spot, and the next game will be critical for their progress. And here are the sports results for last week. In basketball, Northampton first team won by 67 to 65 against Oxford Brooks first team, and in the rugby, Oxford Brooks were unlucky and lost against Reading with a score of 19 against 17. In the women's hockey, Bedford Luton first team drew with the Oxford Brooks fourth team. The score was nil nil, and that's all for the sports this week. And I'm afraid that's it for this week. But remember, you can visit our website at btv.brooks.ac.uk for all sorts of extra content, including dramas and music produced by the TV Society here at Brooks. We would also love to hear about what's going on near you, so please do email your stories to brookstv@brooks.ac.uk. 
Finally, if you haven't done already, go over to www.brooksradio.com to check out the great music and chat. You'll be able to catch my show on the Saturday from 11 till noon for a relaxed bit of chit-chat and music. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.